on YouTube, you're watching Old Mate's Backyard Tech. I am in no way, shape or form a fully qualified mechanic, auto electrician or auto HVAC technician. Therefore, if you are following along with this service repair and or information video, you are doing this at your own risk. So you have been warned. All right, apparently a couple of years ago here at Old Mate's Backyard Tech, I did an 80 series video explaining why I'm not converting the 1FZFE in my 80 series from coil and dizzy ignition to coil pack ignition, which apparently was in 100 or 105 series Land Cruisers with 1FZFEs. In that video, apparently I explained the fact that the reason I'm not doing it is because the 1FZFE in the 80 series was not set up for coil pack ignition. It was set up for dizzy and coil ignition. Overnight, I got an email from a viewer who's left a link to that video in the email, which I'll put up there for it, wanting to know from a technical aspect, my opinion on, is there anything technically preventing you doing the conversion? And will your engine get more power considering you're running a coil pack ignition system rather than a coil and dizzy ignition system? Well, I suppose if you take time and money out of the equation for this 80 series video, there's nothing technically stopping you, but you're not necessarily going to get any more power. One of the best four-wheel drives ever made. Here at Old Mate's Backyard Tech. It's 80 Series time. G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in. It is 80 Series time here at Old Mate's Backyard Tech for Midweek Wednesday, and... Uh, uh, I'm sure I've gone over this in the past, but I can't remember. Um, I got th This is from Joel. Hi, Old Mates Backyard Tech. Recently, I watched a video on your 80 series regarding why you're not converting your 80 series from coil and dizzy to coil pack. I want to know a technical reason specifically as to why you're not doing it and why you suggest people don't do it. I would have thought with less resistance in the motor because you have no dizzy, your engine would actually gain more power from going from going from a pre-igniter coil dizzy ignition to a coil pack ignition. Would the less resistance about the fact that you don't have a distributor on the camshaft improve the power and performance of a 1FZFE? Um, is there anything technically stopping people from doing it? Well, there's nothing technically stopping you from doing it, no. I mean, you... I don't care what you do, honestly. It comes down to the fact that that engine, all right, and if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I believe the 1FZFEs went to coil pack. Hobbs or Mark, you might be able to help me out here. I believe the 1FZFEs, by the time they went to either 100 or 105, were coil pack engines, but they were, they were different engines. The, the way the, the ECU was mapped and the performance settings and so on and so forth was very different to what you get out of a 1FZFE in, a, in an 80. The, the, the 1FZFE in an 80 was, was pre-set up and tuned and built for uh, pre-igniter coil dizzy ignition. There's nothing other than time and money and setting the ECU up to realise that it's a coil pack system rather than a coil dizzy system there's nothing stopping you if you want to do it do it but i've been told by a couple of very reputable mechanics that it's not worth it if you want to convert to coil and you've got the money go out and get a reconditioned 100 or 105 series 1fzfe or a lexus version of it the lexus um 450 engine which is coil pack and you'll get the the associated ECU with it because it's it it it's set up for coil pack. That engine is not set up for coil pack. I'm sure we've done a video about this before. Hobbs or Mark or anyone like that, you, you guys can back me up on this. What, what was the 100 or 105 a coil pack 1FZFE? Because we're talking about late 90s through to the early 2000s. I'm sure by then Toyota had gone to coil pack finally, but the, the problem you've got with that is first you've got to find somewhere to mount the coil pack 
because you've got three coils, all right? Each coil will have two cylinders. Um, one, five, two, four, three, six, okay? It's not a sequential firing engine to start off with. Uh, yeah, one, five, two, four, three, six. Um, so that's your first thing. You got to find somewhere to mount the coil pack. You got to make sure that you've got the right coil pack to suit that engine, and you know your lead resistance, your spark plug um, voltage requirements, so on and so forth. It's not like you can put a generic coil pack on that motor. Um, and then you got to tell the ECU that you know, hey, I don't have a distributor anymore. I don't have a coil, and I don't have a pre-igniter network. So you you can't. You, it's not just I, there's nothing technically stopping you no if you want to convert it convert it but using the analogy of less resistance on the motor because you haven't got a distributor there anymore coming off the camshaft off the intake cam right because the exhaust cams on the if you're looking at the motor the exhaust cams on the left hand side the intake cams on the right hand side so your intake cam drives your distributor okay you you can't make the analogy that because you're going to have that you're trying to draw the same analogy by saying that you know if you take off the thermo clutch fan off of one fzfe you're going five percent more horsepower so therefore if you take the distributor off of one fzfe you're going to gain more horsepower because there's less stuff being driven by the motor that's just simply not right it's it's just not the right way of looking at it the problem you're going to have with a coil pack is if a coil lets go that's it you're gone and you doubt, I doubt your engine will actually start. But converting an existing 1FZFE, it, you know, it's not just a simple conversion. I don't understand why people don't get this. Converting an engine from one type of ignition system to another type of ignition system is not just a simple plug-and-play scenario. I know this. I, I don't understand why people don't, particularly 80 series people. Just because it's like, you know, you take out the dizzy, you take out the pre-igniter, take out the coil, drop in a freaking, drop in a freaking uh, coil pack, do a couple of connections, your engine's going to work. No. No, 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 no. Get that right out of your head. Joel, if you want to convert it, get it done properly. But, I mean, you're not going to gain a lot of horsepower just by converting it. It's not going to happen. You know, it's the same analogy that, you know, you take the... Take the thermo clutch fan off a of 1FZFE and drop on thermoelectrics, you gain about 5% more horsepower, right? You don't have that lag that a thermo clutch fan puts on an engine. And any of us who've got air conditioners in our 80 series has know that with the AC on that fan pulls your motor, okay? Because you've got to get all that air through not just the radiator, you've got to try and pull it through the condenser as well. Even more so if you've got the added transmission cooler. So removing the dizzy from the intake cam of a 1FZFE is not going to gain more performance and horsepower. That, that, that analogy is, is simply wrong. There's, like I said, there's nothing technically stopping you doing it other than time and money. But if you think it's just going to be a plug-and-play scenario, you're wrong. And I, I'll say this much. This will infuriate a lot of people, all right? It's... it's I've said it before, and it infuriated people. So I'm just going to say it again. The way that engine is set up is the way it's staying set up. I am not modifying it like putting in, you know, performance injectors and performance spark plugs and hello, the gardener's here. You know, uh, 98 Ron Optimax, you know, premium unleaded fuels and you know, high flow pumps and all. It doesn't need it. Um. So, look, Joel, if you want to convert it, that's fine, but don't use the analogy that with less resistance on the motor because you're taking out the dizzy, you're going to improve the performance and horsepower of the engine. That's not going to happen. Um, technically, from a technicality point of view, no, there's nothing stopping you doing it. You've just got to get the ECU mapped for coil pack rather than coil and dizzy. Other than that, no, there's nothing technically stopping you. But I'm not sure that e even if you got the best core pack conversion done, 
whether your engine had run as good as what it does with coil and dizzy. There we go. That's a, I, I don't know, I don't know any other answer to that, guys. If anyone wants to chime in, Hobbs, Mark, uh, any of you guys, feel free. Um, you know, is the viewer mad, or is it me who's mad because I'm refusing to convert the engine? I mean, if, if it's a case of old mates being an idiot for not converting his motor to coil pack, then I'm an idiot. Every holier than thou know it all expert knows that. But I look at it this way, that it ain't broke, and the engine's not designed for it. There we go. Anyway, that's it for Midweek Wednesday here at Old Mates Backyard Tech. I've got things to do this morning, and then I'm working the Savo, so that's it for the day here. I'll catch you around the channel tomorrow for Thursdays. Have a good one. This has been an Old Mate's Backyard Tech presentation.